Praise the Lord, dear friend, Thomas Manton IV here, coming to you live after a few minutes. Uh, I've been traveling and in a very, very heavy move of God in conferences and a lot going on. But I wanted to tell you this, the, the Lord spoke to me a few days ago and I feel like I just like the clock goes on pause when God says something, and then when you're ready to do it, finally, even after some days, uh, it comes again, the same place where you left off. And that's another way I know God really wants to say this. I heard this statement in my spirit very clearly. The Lord said to me, I, I want you to tell my people, son, that I want them to write down, to, to you know, mentally envision, focus on, you know, bring up and get the details on it and um, write down and document three things that you really want to see God do right now with immediate effect. You know, the Lord is... Uh, hello, Bishop. Hello, my dear brother Frank. God bless you both. And others of you that are coming on, you can share this also afterwards and... Thank God for the replay thing and all that. People in all different time zones of the world, they can see later. But I, I, my spirit was crying out to God. You know, if you really want to get a need met or like something that you want to see progress in your life, it's not that just that you want something, but you like need it to happen. You want it and you need it. It just has to happen. And I'm talking also about the purpose of God, the will of God, you know, the realms of breakthrough and, and the higher order of things for you to be facilitated and facilitating and situated and situating and initiating and implementing, you know, things on the high levels that God wants. I'm in another city right now, far away in the USA, and the Lord is just really uh, having me move quite a lot around. Now, I heard this, I heard this very deeply, like you need to cry to God. Listen, it's Resurrection Week still, even though Sunday passed when he rose, but I think there's an afterglow effect of for a few days. <laughs> Not that we go by days of the calendar, but you know, there's something powerful that happened. I had a visitation from the Lord on Resurrection Sunday that was just out of this world. I, I was in the boardroom with uh, our dear host, Dr. Mike Murdoch, and I just was with his uh, resident pastor there and talking with her and some others, and, and the Lord, I just broke into tears. You know, the power of God hit me. And I was writing a book, as I was saying in the message when I spoke on uh, Sunday for Dr. Mike Murdoch, and the Lord said to me, uh, uh, I want you to speak about servanthood. So servanthood is the crux and crucible and also the platform for everything that's going to grow. If you can't serve, you can't lead. If you can't uh, go, you can't grow. If you can't grow up, you can't go up. If you can't, you know, take care of that which is another man's and serve and do it well, you, you, God really can't promote you. He really can't. And he, he wants to all the time. But certain people seem to have an affinity for working with God in the right ways. And then they begin to uh, just climb, climb up, 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 you know. And but I, I had this crying out, you know, many days ago, not this week, but the week before. And I wanted to, to do this, uh, this, this message here to you and to everybody, like about crying out to God for what you want to really happen. And it, it is a season and a day and the hour for that. Make no mistake about it. There's no time to waste. There's no time to be lost. Things need to kick into gear right now. Things need to happen right now. There's no, uh, time to lose fooling around and also waiting for something that's not going to materialize. Here's something. If you're struggling for your voice to be heard, you need to find your target audience. If you're 
just being really celebrated, I mean tolerated and not celebrated, you're in the wrong place. That thing will mess you up. It'll mess with your psyche. It will mess with your self-esteem. Your life is special. The calling of God upon you is without repentance. He didn't make a mistake when he chose you. He didn't make a mistake when he called you. He did not um, give any misdirection. He wasn't misguided. He didn't pick a lottery name out of a hat and, you know, or out of a computer program and say, you know, this one, I think. No, he, he knew exactly what he was doing when he formed you. Now, here's the point. You need to, uh, after that, I just got to say this. You have a specific assignment. It has to be done. Now there are, com there are ingredients, there are components, there are relationships, there are people that can actually help that happen. And if you're not functioning with them, you know, with them, through them, there, you, you, you're not going to see the, um, You're not going to see the results that you want to see. It's just not going to happen. And aren't you tired of not having enough results? Aren't you tired of that? I said on Sunday, I said, people without the power of God, or without the will of God, you know, really manifesting in and through them are just useless to humanity. I mean, they're just used to, you know, they're, what they think they want to do and what they hope to do and to become and all that is just, it's just useless and worthless without God actually being, you know, resident in the midst of the whole thing. You, you need more of God. It's the power of God. People need Jesus. People need the Holy Spirit. And th that's what produces supernatural power, glory, training for reigning, miracles, teaching, revelation, mentorship pastoring, you know, evangelizing, bringing God, the miraculous deliverance, teaching and training, people being inspired, enlightened, empowered, illuminated, elevated, you know, by revelators that come to them. And the, the only relevant revelator, relevant revelator, is the one who has the right now thing to say of what is meaningful to someone's life with the components and ingredients and content of what they're saying that will help somebody. I'm glad and I'm so honored and thrilled that I am one of those voices in the earth for the Lord Jesus Christ that God has anointed to speak like relevant, you know, potent laws of success, laws of breakthrough, laws of learning about your mission, laws of, you know, how to be empowered, how to gain financially, how to be enriched and empowered financially, and, and et cetera, you know, and and, and, you know, the substance and content of these kind of messages is what's going to cause people to break through. Now, I sense that many people are stuck. It's a horrible place to have so much of God in you, so much of his plan in motion for you, and yet you're just stuck in somewhere, stuck somewhere, stuck in something that you shouldn't be stuck in. I'm praying today that God will begin to release you from that by his fire. He'll begin to uh, refine you, retool you, retune you, revive you, reanoint you, revisit you, reactivate you. You know, the reactivator will reactivate the vessel and get it, you know, the life blood of his power flowing through you, the veins of your, of your body even, even in the blood circulation, yeah, for your health and even in the spirit, you know, for health and wealth spiritually and naturally and financially in every way. But it comes through the connection to a place and a people. There's a definite geographical place for you. There's a definite place of assignment for you. There's a definite place of purpose with relationships and people for you somewhere. There's a definite uh, a, a cause that God has had you to embark upon. Now, you need to be in the place where... Uh, you're, it's being facilitated, like, you know, activated, moving, functional, relevant, you know, with relevant, excited people. If you're by yourself in a place 
and nothing's moving and nothing's shaking, and yet you're called to be the mover and shaker, you are in the wrong place. And there has to be some adjustments made with immediate effect. I want you to think through your mind, through your spirit, through your imagination of where you are as well as what you want. I want, I want you to locate yourself. And this could be a bit painful, you know, but you, you have to get it solved. I want you to look, so I feel the anointing so strong here. You, I want you to locate yourself. I want you to locate where you are. I want you to locate what you want to be. I want you to locate what you want to become, where you, what you want, and what you want to accomplish. I want you to locate number one where you are. I want you to locate number two what you want to become. And I want number three you to locate what you want to produce and do and have, you know, the proceeds of, and the production of all of that. Now that's all, that's proceeds for you personally. Of course that's in there, but also for the kingdom of God. What do you want to achieve for the kingdom of God? What do you want to achieve for the big purpose of humanity be, being a greater experience for people because you came across their life? You know, it's just like that. You need to uh, be the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath, the lender, not the borrower. Blessed in the city, blessed in the country, blessed in everywhere you go, every door will be open to you. Every, you know, fascinating thing that you want and desire be real to you. The pleasures you want to have, the things you want to experience, the life you want to experience, times in his presence. You know, there's, there are places where God releases a tangible touch and a real touch upon um, people that get positioned correctly. Yeah, you know what I mean? Position correctly, with the right relationships, in the right place, at the right time, with the right people, doing the right things. And God wants you to be all up in that mix and all up in that formulation and formula. He wants you to be there. He wants you to be doing that. To be smack dab, as we say, it, I don't know, who, who made that word? In the middle of God, in the middle of God's will, I mean, to be positioned and placed exactly where and with who and why and for what purpose and also with people that are sensitive to the spirit and celebrate you and don't just overlook you. Can I tell you, if someone just looks at you and they're doing other things and they never helped you and they never, you know, you never felt good and you just feel grieved when you see them and there's no connection, there's nothing to talk about, there's nothing to do and they're going on and on about their different friends and you know, you're not in that, you're not one of them. You need to not even waste your time for another second of your life. Don't be double-minded and grieve the Lord, like James 1 says. Double-minded person, you know, will, will, will receive nothing from the Lord. The Lord gets annoyed, you know. He says, you know, I gave you this purpose, and, and, and are you really even walking in it? So you, you, you need to know that. Like, you, you, you can't uh, disturb God's, a uh, good feeling about calling and choosing you when you're not even calling and choosing yourself correctly. Oh my, that's powerful. It, it, the scripture says in um, 2 Peter 1 10, 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 10, make your calling and election sure, for if you do, you'll never stumble and fall. But if you trip along the way and you know, you'll just keep shake yourself up, get up, keep moving and keep going. And no problem, you know, the righteous, you know, will, will, can fall seven times, but the, they'll get up every time, and the eighth time they'll get up and walk on too. And God, but God is with them, you know. Just because you're, you're, you're called and you're graced by God and anointed doesn't mean you're going to have no trouble in this life. As a matter of fact, you probably have more trouble because the devil's, the devil's on the loose because he hates you and he hates what your, the power that you have, you understand? So I tell you, anointed servants go through great, great trials and tribulations, terrible things. Does that mean you don't have the victory anyway? Of course you do. Yes, you do have the victory. The Lord is with you. So I want you to take note. I want you to locate yourself. I want where you are right now. I want you to envision right now what you want to become. 
what you want to be doing with your life. So you, you have to locate where you are. You have to, ex you know, you have to accept the pain. And pain will make you move. Pain will make you not want to tolerate things anymore. Let, let me tell you something else. You, we were not ordained as people for endless suffering. You know, the, whoever came up with this suffering thing, like it's a part of the gospel that we need to like think as a, a theoretical, holy thing that we should like crave and want. I think that's psychotic. I think that's stupid. I, I think it's absolutely nuts. The reason, let me tell you the reason people saw you so, boom, what about the Fox, Fox's Book of Martyrs? When, what about what they, how they did the apostles? Because the devil hated them because they were anointed. And if God allowed them to go out that way for his glory somehow at the end, they ended up in heaven in a few minutes. Hey, that's how it went. But you know what? This suffering thing is overrated. God does not want you to suffer. He wants you to flourish and be happy. That's all through the Bible. If I took a few minutes, I could tell you an almost an endless list that would take days, even a week to say if I never stopped talking for a straight week. Scripture after scripture, verse after verse, book after book, chapter after chapter of how God uh, 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 gave promise that he wants you to flourish and be blessed. Say amen. Now, he didn't say, I want you to be cursed, struggling with sickness, struggling with disease, struggling with loneliness and rejection <laughs> and frustration and uh, pain and turmoil and uh, unsurety about tomorrow and you don't know what you're doing and you, you, you're just all messed up in the wrong environment. You know, environments matter. The Lord spoke to me years ago. He said, son, tell my people this. And I've done it all over the world. Your environment, he said, the Lord said, he said, my son Thomas, I want you to tell my people this all over the world. Everywhere you go, I want you to tell my people this. It's a powerful point I want to, I want to say to them. A, a powerful revelation I want to say to them. I want to speak this to them. Your environment will either pollute you or promote you, depending on what it is. If you have a polluter of your, 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 your sanity and your emotional well-being because of rejection or being overlooked or they don't, you know, you're not part of that or you're not part of this or that. And you just, there's just like nothing moving much. Okay. And then you have a celebrator on the other side of something in the equation, or somewhere else, or a different relationship. Uh, maybe you've achieved in a different place, maybe it's a different... And, and, and you, what, what are you supposed to choose? Which one are you supposed to choose? Which one are you supposed to choose? Stay stuck in the wilderness and obscurity? Or, you, or you're supposed to move to the celebration factor? Because you know what? What, what? Where you function, and where you flourish, and where you operate greatly, and who celebrates you and the company of people and that environment, and that whole thing. It absolutely brings out the God in you. You know, the nature of God that's in you, the power of God that's in you. But then you're somewhere else and you feel sick. I'm telling you, I know what I'm talking about. You feel sick, you feel tired, you feel sad, you feel lonely, you feel even depressed, you feel disheveled, you feel a, uh, you're not functioning. And your every day, you know, you begin to chameleonize yourself. Chameleons, you know, the things that turn colors and based on what they're looking at in the environment, they can mirror the, change the color to hide themselves, you know. Yeah, you, you, you chameleonize yourself, you hide yourself and, and paint yourself like the color of that environment that you're in of nothingness. That is a form of stupidity. You know, ignorance is when you just don't know about something. Stupidity is when you can know it and you don't choose to know it. Or you're supposed to know it and you don't grab it. Or you're supposed to find out, but you don't seek the solution and the answer. Another thing, questions, you know, determine the seasons in your life. You have to ask questions. Some people can say, well, maybe I, if, am I a good question asker? Well, the Bible says in Matthew 7, 7, ask, seek, and knock. You know, you have to ask, you have to seek, you have to knock. It's even an acronym of the three words, A-S-K, ask, A-S-K, S-C-K, knock, ask. You know, some people say it with accent. They say, you better ask somebody. 
Uh, I gotta have a little fun on that one. You better act somebody. Whoa. Ax. No, it's not A X E, it's A S K. All right, so let me bring some correction to the English, uh, speak, speaking proper English. Praise the Lord. I'm having fun. So now, you, if you need to ask somebody, then do that properly and sever the relationship. But, uh, but ask questions in the, <laughs> ask questions in the middle of it. You have to ask. You have to get knowledge. You have to learn. You have to observe. You have to discover. But here's the bottom line on this message here. And, uh, you must, absolutely must read the signs and lo in locating yourself of what's not working and move to the path of action of what's going to work for what you want to become and then what you want to have and produce. And that is the word of the Lord today. I wanted to bring that to you. You need to cry to God. You need to locate yourself, think about and meditate upon and imagine and envision what you want and then what you want to produce through becoming that great vessel of God and vessel of honor that God wants you to be. But there are other components now, the, re the relationships, the geographical place, the uh, celebrators, not the tolerators, the endorsers and the embracers, not the rejectors and the, you know, people that roll your eyes if they look at you and they think, you know, there are people that do that. They got something in their head, like against you. You know, Jesus said, remember when the apostles went to him and said, hey, these guys, you know, what are they doing talking about you? They're, they're, are they for us? Are they on our side? Have we ordained them, kind of, kind of, so to speak? And Jesus said, hey, if they're not against us, they're for us. And if they're for us, they're not against us. Hmm? There are people that are not really for you. Grow up. Take the bitter pill. Cry some tears if you have to, but you need to pray. It's time now, in this new month, in this month or wherever we are in the calendar, this new season. Yeah, I want to call it resurrection season. Resurrect. You need to resurrect. You need reformation, restoration, reconciliation. There are people like you. Your mind has been clouded. I'm speaking prophetically to many people. And, you know, I love when God gives you anointing and licensure to speak in a certain area very powerfully because you've also tasted of that. And, you know, you can listen to a mentor like myself, a coach like myself, a, a prophet, a teacher like myself, and, and, and gain a lot of things because I'm telling you there's a lot of wisdom flowing through me from experience even. So tap into the well, tap into the grace. Sow into this anointing also. On thomasmanton.com, there's a way to do it there and all of our details, and we're going to have a lot more. I don't want to uh, 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 take time well, to say all of the different ways you can sow into the ministry, but let's put it on the screen in the type notes of how you could sow into the ministry. Thank you, my dear friend, for doing that for me, that I can just continue to flow here and, and, and speak this. So there are ways you can sow into the ministry and tap the grace, and you know, God will just release a harvest. Even the revelations of what I'm talking about right now. To make it real to you, like where you're at. You know, let you wake up, come out of the stupor and the slumber. And begin to envision what you really need to be, to be, to be becoming. What you need to be becoming. What you need to be doing. And then what you want to produce out of that. Those three things. Very important. And we know from a great book that was written also uh, by a dear mentor who said the three most important things in your life is number one, the Holy Spirit. Number two, your assignment. And number three, your seed. The Holy Spirit. And then your assignment, your mission in life. And then the seed of what you can sow to increase financially so that you can have provision for the vision and be blessed so father i pray right now in the name of jesus by the holy spirit let your power and presence fall upon my friend right now 
let them locate themselves, let them envision what they need to become, you know, by functionality, what they need to be doing, and then what they want to produce, they will actually see it because they're positioned correctly, because they're in the right place, because they're flowing in the things that you've ordained under your anointing. And I pray for divine connections, divine directions, divine uh, a conviction, other prophetic voices, you know, the leading and the strength to get every person to the place called there, uh, the place called there, the place of provision, the place of abundance and flourishing, the place of functionality, the place of acceleration, and away from the place of toleration, the place of, um, you know, healing and, 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 and invigorate, invigoration and energizing, and away from the place that just depleted one's imagination, killed their spirit, affected their physical health, you know. And there's a scripture that says this. In 1 Corinthians 11, we use that for the communion element, uh, communion time. Many are weak and sickly among you. Why? And many even sleep. That's bad. I mean, that means death. I mean, but you know, that's not going to happen to any of us. I declare it will not happen in Jesus' name. I just declare that. So receive that as the word of the Lord. You're going to live a long life. You're going to fulfill the will of God. You're going to be flourishing and rich. You're going to be satisfied. You're going to be filled. Your life is going to be filled with pleasures and prosperity, like the Bible says in Job 36, 11. When you please Him, when you do His will, hey, you're going to see the blessings of the Lord that make rich and add no sorrow in your life. But there's a shift that needs to happen. A power shift. A prophetic shift. And I pray that everything that's needed for that to happen now is coming to you, my friend. In Jesus' name, so be it. Locate where you are. Envision what you need to become and be doing to produce what you want to produce, what God wants you to produce, and get busy on that path right now. And I declare again, Father, in Jesus' name, according to Isaiah 48, 17, a beloved verse of mine, I am the Lord your God who will teach you to profit and lead you in the way you should go. And everything that's needed for that program, let it be so in the life of your beloved son and daughter that's listening to me right now and connected with me right now. In Jesus' name. Thank you for being my partner in the ministry. We travel all over the world. We help the poor. We help the people. We help especially a lot of leaders. We help a lot of People that are gifted get into their calling, you know, and we're upgrading our ministry, media facilities, a lot of things, and your help will help us more in that. Plus, you know, giving is always about you. When you give, you're making a transaction through the anointing to be blessed by God. So become a partner in Jesus' name. Praying for those three things. I'm praying you'll cry out to God. I'm praying you'll get serious. I'm, pray, I'll pray, I'm praying you shake off the dust of your feet where you don't feel the peace. I pray that you'll uh, you know, make the necessary adjustments in every area of your life and everything in your life to get into the full flow of what God has ordained for you in Jesus' name. So be it. Talk to you on the next broadcast. I'm Thomas Manton IV. I love you and I am praying for you. Talk to you again. Make this a great day. Seize the moment. Get those three things rolling in your mind and your spirit. Begin to pray, and I'm going to continue praying for you. When you have prayer requests, write me. Write me a private inbox message, and there'll be a number on the screen, 747-263-2484, that you can call from anywhere in the world, plus one. It's a United States number. Plus one, 747-26-FAITH. Plus one, 747-26-FAITH, which is 747 747- 263-2484 and I will get the message, leave a message and it'll type the message for me and I'll be able to write you back, all right, and communicate directly with you and I am praying for you, know that God is with me and I'm releasing his grace and fire upon you through prayer and through the prophetic word in Jesus' name. Make it a great day. I'm looking to hear from you.